The Gospel for today is from Luke chapter 10. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village, where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks, so she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear hearers of the Word of God, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our living Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. This is a uh, painting by the uh, Chinese artist Yi Qi of uh, the visit of Jesus to uh, the house of uh, Mary and Martha. Uh, our gospel reading this morning has created a lot of uh, discussion over the centuries, especially among the uh, women's circle groups. Unlike the parable of the Good Samaritan, which keeps us at arm's length, because it's a, it's a parable, and Jesus says, well, let me tell you a story, and so we imagine the priest walking by, the, the man lying there, the, the, the Levite, and, and then the Samaritan helps him, and we can imagine him putting the person on the donkey to, to the innkeeper, and, and Jesus talking about that. We, you know, that's something that happens out there. Now this is something that can, can come right to us, because we, we can experience, we maybe have experienced just these types of things, where we, one of us ends up doing all the work while the other is just sitting around. And so it, it's something that comes to us right, uh, right away. I remember the first time I, I led a Bible study on this in my first parish. Uh, I was in my first parish, freshly ordained, as a pastor. Our daughter Sarah was two months old, uh, a toddler and still in diapers. I was just getting into uh, the, the, the rhythm of being a, a freshly minted pastor in a two-point parish, a country church and a town church. And I learned uh, that, uh, that it was customary that the pastor lead, they called it the, the lesson leaders Bible study for the circles. There's the Mary and the circle, the Martha circle, the Lydia Circle, the Dorcas Circle, and different churches called by different names. Sometimes there's a faithful love of the circles too. So anyway, I said, oh, okay. So we meet together uh, with the leaders of the circles and go over uh, for that month what they were going to teach in the circles. And they said, the pastor always does this. And as the, the, the freshly minted pastor, I tell you this is my first parish and I was brand new. I said, okay. And I said, oh, sure, I'd be glad to do that. And, I, and they gave me the, the women of the ELCA booklet, you know. And I looked through it, and Luke 10, oh, Mary and Martha, oh, that's only four verses long. How much trouble can a pastor get into in four verses? <laughs> no problem. I would learn. <laughs> Easy lesson. So as we start the lesson, and we read it. I go, let's just take turns reading it like we do a Bible study here. Each person take a verse. There's only four verses. It's four verses. Each take a verse. So, uh, after we read it through, Ethel, the leader of the Martha circle, said, Pastor, why was Jesus so hard on Martha? Well, and then the Jean, the leader of the, of the Lydia Circle, said, Well, yeah, after all, it was Martha's house. And I get slowly, and then all of a sudden, to my, in my mind's eye, I saw it. The two jaws of the bear trap, right where my foot was going to step on. And, and you know what happens when you're, when you're caught in a, like you're coming up, you're going to hit the deer, you know, if you've driven a car. It's like time slows down. It's all, it's all right there. It's like, 
Here it comes. It, it, every second is like an hour. You can just slowly see it happen. And I could see in my mind's eye my foot stepping on the spring and the jaws clamping my leg. And, uh, and so I thought about my response. Did I tell you I was a newly minted pastor for his parish? Okay. I thought about it and I realized, okay, this is my first chance to prove to them that I'm a pastor that knows what's going on and uh, that, I, that I have something to say. You know, just got out of seminary and I'm getting my feet wet and learning how to do this. And I, and I have to assert my, you know, my, my pastorness, or whatever that is. <laughs> and so I thought about what I was going to say. I think that time slows down to get all this time in the world, imagine a fraction of a second before my foot sprang the trap. I was going through these things to say. And finally I realized, you know, I'm not, I'm not proud of it. I've got to confess what I said. Confession to make, but I felt well. I need to say something, so I looked at Ethel straight in the eye, and I said what I said. I said, "You know, those donuts you made are really good." <laughs> Janine, I said, "Oh, that coffee is delicious. Can I have another cup?" <laughs> I had to. It was a safety issue. And then the bear trap disappeared on magic. It's often a question of Mary versus Martha when we come to this, this Bible study, this, this story. It's only four verses long. It's a pleasant visit. Oh, Jesus is going on the way to Mary and Martha's house, and they come on in for, oh, that's kind of neat. He had somewhere to go, and just a, a connection there. We hear about him later. We hear about their brother, Lazarus. You've probably heard of him. You know, so there's this connection there, and uh, that's that's where they go to. That's where he hangs out. And uh, and it's a family feud. <laughs> Tell her to get her butt in here. That's not. A, that's in the Greek. That's in the Greek translation. <laughs> it's not in the English translation. But, uh, in all the circle lesson leaders lessons that I've led. Try saying that five times fast. Uh, I've learned that, and over the years, uh, who do people mostly identify with when this story is read? You'll never guess. Martha. And they all say, yep, I've been there just last week when my relatives came over and my, my sister and her son and her, and her husband, you know, who just sits around, you know, whatever. And I did all the work. And, and that's what had happened, this, this leader. They, they all related to that. They've all been there. Whether it was Thanksgiving or Christmas or Easter or something, where they were doing the work and everybody else was sitting watching the Vikings lose. Did I just say that? Well, I did. Uh, Martha, people identify with Martha. And so they think, oh my gosh, Jesus, what? Can't you, didn't you care that she was doing all the work? Well, he comes. Uh, Jesus comes to Bethany, and she shows her hospitality. That's what you do. It's her house. She makes up, whips up something for him, uh, shares the house with, with Mary. Uh, it doesn't say what she was doing uh, in her serving. It says he was serving her then. Um, but we, we, we can pretty much put a, a good guess that it was, she was preparing something to eat. And uh, Mary, sitting at the feet of Jesus, was something unusual. That's what men did. Men did that. There's no mention of Lazarus being in here, so... But, but that, she, that she sat at the feet of Jesus, that's, a, that's what you do to a rabbi. You sit at their feet and they stand and teach you. Um, and this is a... Let's see here. Oh. There we go. Uh, there, there's, there's... I went backwards. Uh, here, they are, here they are in the picture again. And then, uh, and then what happens, um, you know, she's, she, she's sitting at the feet of Jesus, which was something that women didn't do again. But then Luke tells us what the real issue is. Martha, Martha. You are worried and distressed. 
distracted by many things. Worry. And distracted. The word distracted there, a Greek word for it, I'm not going to try to pronounce that, but the word for it, it means to be pulled or dragged in two different and opposite directions. You're in the middle of there, okay? You're pulled and distracted. You're pulled and dragged in different directions. Uh, distractions. Uh, nowadays, they can turn lethal. 24% of car crashes nowadays, the National Transportation Safety Board has studied this the last six, seven years, are caused by portable electronic devices. What's another term for that? Cell phones. Either you're talking or you're texting. That wasn't even a word uh, 10 years ago. At least very few more people knew what that meant. And uh, now it's a big deal. Well, uh, sometimes there are distractions that can cause accidents. And, and uh, here's a few of them that I got uh, from insurance companies where people will tell you, okay, what happened? And if you can figure out what this person was talking about, you get to get the first uh, bar today of coffee. I started to turn, and it was at this point I noticed a camel and an elephant tethered at the verge. This distraction caused me to lose concentration, and I hit a baller. Okay. Anybody know what that means? I have no idea. I would, this next one I would love to meet. I just have to meet them. The accident happened because I had one eye on the truck in front, one eye on the pedestrian, and the other on the car behind. <laughs> okay. And uh, this one, I, my all-time favorite. I pulled away from the side of the road, glanced at my mother-in-law, and headed over the bank. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what happened in 2009. Minneapolis. It was supposed to land in Minneapolis. They flew for over an hour past Minneapolis, and the only reason they knew that they didn't miss the city was because a stewardess came in and said, uh, Sir, uh, Captain, are, aren't we supposed to prepare for landing like an hour ago? And they went, Oh, yeah. They had a laptop computer. It wasn't a texting. They were looking at their laptops trying to flew right over Minneapolis, just and uh, busted. <laughs> well, anyway, uh, that's just a, no, nobody, nothing happened there, but it could have. Uh, but uh, Virginia Tech Transportation Institute study of commercial drivers found that a safety critical event is 163 times more likely if a driver is texting, emailing, or Nowadays, with smartphones, you can actually get on the internet and watch a movie on your cell phone while you're driving your truck. I mean, <laughs> distractions. Distractions. Uh, that's, the, that's the myth of multitasking. Oh, yeah, you can do it. You can multitask. And that's what Jesus is getting at. Martha, you're, you're distracted. Thanks for the meal, but I mean, it's letting you break in and wreck, wreck the moment here. I mean, it, it, you want me to referee between you and your sister, and I don't, that's not the most important thing, is what we're going to do. It's the distraction and the worry that separates her from what the most important thing is. Uh, and yet we all try to do it. We all try to be like this guy. <laughs> ah, just one more plate, that'll be fine. I've done, I've, I can do six or seven in a row now. Have you ever seen these, uh, like in a circus act, where they, the guy keeps them spinning? And I can do maybe one, two, maybe. But we, we get good and, and better at it. We think, well, what's one more? Well, you know, we're eventually fall. I mean, it's just you get more than you can handle. When I was in high school, my mom gave us a book. My twin brother and I, uh, Bushcraft. And it says, all you need to have is anything you need in the wilderness. All you need for a man-made object is a knife. A knife. One knife. 
That's all you need. And the whole book is saying, this is all you need. And it, the guy builds a log cabin for carrying out logs <laughs> the night. I don't know how he did it, but he, but, you know, he shows it how you do it. It was really quite, quite amazing. And of course, nowadays with survival stuff and, and preppers, these, these are more and more, more and more popular now, but this is a long time ago. Uh, a knife? Really? <laughs> and that's what he said. Don't tell Shields or, or Cabela's or Gander Mountain about this book because they'll go out of business, right? They tell you you need all this stuff. He says, you know, you know, you just need one knife. Jesus says you need only one thing. And his words to Martha are not a scolding or a rebuke, as often people read it and they say, why was he so hard on her? <laughs> uh, it's an invitation. It's an invitation. You're worried and distracted about many things. That's true. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be that way. Uh, it's okay to, you know, to let that stuff go. Quit spinning those plates. One thing is needful. One thing is needed for Martha is to receive what Jesus is there for. Himself. To listen to his words. Jesus, Jesus' entire whole life was based on that fact. His concern is with us. It's about us and our relationship with him. That's why I think Luke put this in there. It, it sounds like kind of odd. It's like kind of jumps out there on the way. This is right after he talked about the Good Samaritan. You know, how the person did something. Go and do likewise. And, and now uh, she's doing all this stuff, but it's distracting her. Luke keeps that in there. Even though it, some people feel well, Jesus is a big boy, what's he saying that for? It's an invitation to focus on the one thing that we have, and that's Jesus. Again, many people identify with the Martha. That's the one uh, that they, they say, yep, I've been Martha. <laughs> in fact, my name might even be Martha. Or I might be in the Martha circle. Uh, we feel pulled in those two directions, or pulled by many directions. Uh, and we know that worry, you're distracted and worried about many things, but we know that worry does us no good. In fact, much of what we worry about actually never happens. And that's why Luke, that's why Jesus, after this story, in, in Luke, he continues on, and he meets other people. <laughs> and they're just as worried as Martha was. Paul, then he finally has to say, can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span of life? How about a single second? And so Jesus is realizing what, what's going on with all of us. Here's, a, here's an African uh, portrayal of Jesus with Mary and Martha. He paints it as if it's in an African village in there. There's Jesus sitting. He's always in red. That's a royal color in, in, in Africa. And there she is. Which one is Martha? <laughs> the one pounding the mallet or whatever they're doing and talking, hey, get her to help me, you know. Uh, what's going on here? We don't know how this story ends. What happens next, uh, nobody knows. Luke doesn't tell us. It's just like the end of the parable of the prodigal son. When the, when the father goes out to the, the older son who's worked his whole life on the farm, you know, and kept stay, stayed still and stayed close. To them. Uh, we don't know if the, son, if the older son came to the party. But we, what happened next? That's what everybody wants to know. <laughs> Did Martha sit down and listen to what Jesus had to say? Did, did Jesus, Mary, and Martha sit down and eat the meal she had prepared? Were Mary and Martha reconciled after that? We don't know. But we do know that Jesus invites all of us who are burdened with the multitasking virus, <laughs> if you want to say it that way, all of us who are worried and distracted by many things. And that's the genius of Luke. Well, what were those things? We can put whatever we want in there. What worries and distracts us from, 
focusing on Jesus and trusting his word for our lives. That, whatever that is, that's, that can be put in there. We do know that Jesus invites us all to sit and rest in his presence, to listen and to hear his words of grace and truth for us, spoken to you and me, to know that we are loved and cherished and valued as people who are made in God's image. We, we, we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. And Jesus says, nothing and no one will ever, will ever, be, ever be able to snatch you out of my hand. That's what he says. That's what he says to us. There's need of only one thing. Attention to the one who is present. Who is present here. There were two or more gathered. There I am in the midst of you. Let's see. One, two, three. We got it. He's here. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand and let us confess now together. <laughs>